Okay, so we are in section 5.1 and 5.2, and this is page one, so I guess example one and two, and we are now looking at torsion, and with torsion we have developed that our shear stress is equal to T rho over J, and that is anywhere along the radial length, and our maximum shear stress is TC over J, and we need to remember that C is the same thing as the radius, okay? And then what is our polar moment of inertia? Okay, if we are solid, then our polar moment of inertia is pi over 2, C to the fourth. And if we were hollow, then it is pi over 2, C outer to the fourth, minus C inner to the fourth, and that's J. Okay, so that's all we have so far. So this first question just says, we have a solid and hollow shafts so are each subjected to the torque T. In it, each case, sketch the shear stress distribution along the two radial lines, okay? So if I'm twisting this way, then I'm gonna wanna, the fibers are gonna be twisting. So when I'm on this side right here, okay, then we know it's linear because it is a function of that radial length. So if our row is at zero, which is at the center, we don't have any stress, okay? As we're twisting around, it now is gonna look something like this. It's kind of like a windmill. And this becomes super important because when we have a beam in bending, okay, if, if we have a beam in bending and here's our beam and it's all loaded and we have that shear stress because we have a shear and moment diagram, then I know that this shear stress might be acting downwards. Well, if I'm looking at something that's got torsional uh, stress, shear stress, and bending shear stress, this is trying to twist it up, this is trying to push it down, and they're kind of counteracting each other, okay? So it becomes very important to understand what this looks like as we're going around, because as we start getting to the end of the chapter where we add everything together, we have to know what's going on. So here I'm twisting, Okay, I'm twisting, so I'm gonna go up. And now I don't have any stress here in the middle, so we're just gonna kinda draw a dotted line. And then we're gonna kinda go like that. We're gonna come down, and we can see that this time, here's our, meet, our shear max, here's our shear row, um, shear max. Okay, we don't have any stress in the middle. So again, it's pushing in this direction. And we don't have any shear stress there in the middle, but we will have shear stress as we come to the outer fibers. And here we have our maximum, and here we have our minimum, um, which is a T rho, and it's going to be dependent on that. So that's what our shear stress distribution looks like. If we were to pull a, a stress block on the outside here, then I'm going to be going up, and then it has to come back and meet at the corners, okay? Um, in here, it's going to look the same. It's just going to have a different value. So now let's put some numbers with this. The hollow circular shaft is subjected to an internal torque of, so they've already told us what the torque is. We don't have to figure that out. It's given. And I like to rewrite this as 10 times 10 to the third Newton meters, because again, that kilo just, if I don't pay attention to my units, I am off by factors of large numbers. Determine the shear stress at point A, so that's on the inside, and at point B, that's on the outside. Represent each on a stress element. Sketch the torque distribution across the cross section. So I know that my shear stress equals T rho over J, and the maximum on the outside is T C over J. So J is the same for both. It's like that moment of inertia, and we can see that it is hollow, so J equals pi over 2, C outer to the fourth minus C inner to the fourth. And remember, C is our radius. So we're going to have pi over 2, and I need to be in meters. Remember, I need to be in meters. So I have point, point zero 0.06 meters to the fourth minus 0 0.04 meters to the fourth. And let's get that calculated. Pi is a number, 2 divided by 0 0.06 enter to the 4th, 0 0.04 enter to the 4th, minus times, 
and I get that J equals 1.6336282 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that's going to be meters to the fourth. Okay, so it even has the same unit. So as that moment of inertia, it's it's uh, the units of length to the fourth. So now, if we are looking at block, um, I think this is B, block B. It is on the outside, so it's going to be our maximum. So our shear is going to be T rho over J. So we have 10 times 10 to the third Newton meters. We have our radial length, and our radius is 0 0.06 meters divided by J. I'm not going to rewrite that out. So our shear stress at B, <laughs> I don't know how I can, because I know a B, it looks like that, but it's just sideways. Sorry, I have brain problems, clearly. Okay, so we're going to enter that in. So we're going to drop it out. We're going to drop. We're going to take the reciprocal so it's on the top. Okay, so now I have 10, 10 to the third. 0 0.06 times, and I get this a ginormous number, and so it's, I know it's in newtons and meters, so we're going to make it in kilonewtons, one, two, three, and then mega, one, two, three. So I have 36.73 mega pascals, and I can do the same thing with block A. I know that block A is going to be some radial length, so technically, that should have been a C because we were looking at maximum. So I have 10 times 10 to the third Newton meters, and its radial length is 0 0.04 meters. Okay, and then we're going to divide it by J. So our shear stress at A, are we expecting it to be smaller or bigger? What do you guys think? So I have 10 times 10 to the third times 0 0.04 times, and this time I get a very large number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have 24.49 mega pascals, and we expect it to be smaller because it's on the inside, okay? It's on the inside. So now if I'm at B, and I'm going to pull B, so B is a little tiny block right here. Look at me pulling B out. I'm actually going to draw it kind of in 3D. Okay, so I have shear stress, it's going this way, so it's going to be going down. So that means on the bottom it has to be meeting it, so it's going to be going on the top like that, and then on the back it's going to be coming up, okay? Because if I just have it going down, then the box is not in equilibrium. It's going to want to move down, so I have to have it pushing up in the back, right, on the back side, so that we're equal and opposite and it's not moving up and down. Well, now it's spinning like a top. So I have to put the, the stress top and bottom to keep it in equilibrium. And so this is going to be a maximum of 36.73 megapascals. And then I can do the same thing here. I have this block, and it is still spinning. So we're going down. So it's going to be up in the back and across in the top. And then on the bottom, it would be coming back towards us, okay? And so that's how that stress, um, if you look, it's on the outside, but then it's going um, in, okay? And so this is going to be 24.49 megapascals, okay? And then if I were to draw it on the cross section, so let's put them together. Then it's going to come, we're coming down, so we're going to kind of go across like this. We're going to go down, we're going to go down, and we are showing out on this point, we have T max of 37 megapascals, and this point right here on the inside is going to be 24, eh, let's call that 24 megapascals for now. Okay, and so it's distributed linearly. If it were solid, then it would go all the way to the middle as zero.